Good Monday night, everybody. Welcome to the NFL Conference Championship Recap. So, I'm Mason Spesky, your host. Going to try to make this one short and sweet just because, again, I'm just going to talk about the game itself and what went wrong during the game. I haven't fought much about the offseason at all for any of these teams, to be honest. You know, just because both games were so intense, came so down to the wire. That's how you got to love it, though. <laughs> Sorry about that. I'm just getting started to get a little cold late last night. And so hopefully I feel okay. Sorry about that. So I might be coughing or sneezing during the the video. So excuse me for that. I'll be fine, though. I'm taking my medicine and... I feel fine, so I'm going to school, so all good. Anyway, though, on to um, today's video. We're going to talk about the championship games. Like I said, before I went into my little sneezing rampage there, um, I was going to talk about the conference championship games. We're not, like I said, though, we're not going to talk a lot about the offseason today. There's a whole offseason video coming up. And with these games so intense and so close, both of them, I haven't really had any time to think about the offseason for these teams because, you know, it comes back to what Dan Campbell said last night at his press conference following the game. There's This might be your only chance. There's no guarantee you're going to get back here next year. He's 100% right. And this is how I'm going to open before we get into the games. So let's look at the big picture here. I have, we can get this out because it's meant to be used for school, but as you can see, I haven't updated this since January the 9th, so, and I barely use it anymore because I use my planner, probably better off doing that, so we are going to get rid of this, and we are going to use it for the video, and whenever I do decide to use this for school again, that will be great, but for now, I don't really need it because I keep track of my grades on my own. I used, I used this during the first semester. I didn't use a planner first semester. Instead, I used a whiteboard where I wrote down all my assignments, counted down the days till the holidays and finals and all that stuff, and just looked at things through that way. I have not done that at all this semester. I've used my planner, and I was just going for it and highlighted it. And to tell you the truth, it's worked out so much better. I feel so much better this semester. So, yeah, if you ever want college advice, just, yeah, I would recommend using a planner as opposed to to a whiteboard. At some point, though, this semester, I will get back to the whiteboard. It's just things have been hectic with everything. So, yeah. But we're going to use this for sports purposes today. And we're going to go for all the teams. That's how we're going to start because... And why I... And I'll... There's a method to my madness. And when we're all done, I will get into why we are doing this exercise. I kind of lied to you all and lied to myself in my, our own little way because I said I was going to try to keep this video short and sweet, but I didn't. But, hey, I felt so much better, though, when I animate it or, like, make it personal and make this interactive. And I hope you guys think the same way because I feel better once I make it interactive with you guys because I think it's important to get you guys involved. I mean, you are my subscribers. It means a lot to me that each and every one of you took the time to watch this video today. If you're not already subscribed, I hope you take the time to subscribe. So, yeah. So, my point, first off, as I finish writing, because we're already on the NFC South, my point in all of this is what Dan Campbell said last night. Essentially, he said, I haven't won this might be your only chance here. So, before I begin, we turn this into an academic, from an academic board to all 32 teams board. I like this better, to be honest with you. Here's about school. Now I'm just joking around. But anyway, it'll go back to academics as soon as we're done with this. Anyway, though, let's get into it. So, what he said is true. You might not get back here next year. Let's look at last year's teams in the AFC and NFC Championship. Cincinnati Bengals and Kansas City Chiefs. The Bengals, they didn't get back there. They had a lot of injuries. They had a rough year, started one and three, and it just never took off from there. And as a result, they missed the playoffs at nine and eight. 
Chiefs, yeah, they made the AFC Championship, but they're in a whole different tier because they have a quarterback that's amazing. And, yeah, quarterback beyond amazing. So don't include them. Let's look at the NFC Championship. Niners and Eagles. Niners, yes, they made it back, but they're stronger now. They are stronger because their defense is stronger. Their defensive coordinator, as much as I love D'Amico Ryans, and he's one of my favorite head coaches in the NFL, I actually think Steve Wilkes made this defense better than it was a year ago. The, the defense that has another year under them, Steve Wilkes' scheme has worked out better. And, yeah, that's really been a good thing for them, for sure. And also the additions of Hargrave and Jair Brown, one of my prospects I liked more out of the draft class is AFD out of Penn State. He did good this year, so they clicked, and the roster was put together perfectly there, and Kyle Sanhan's a genius. That's all I have to say about that. But let's look. We're going to flash back to the last time the Niners and the Chiefs met in the Super Bowl in 2020. Guess who missed the playoffs the next year? The 49ers. Because of injury. Why? Because of injuries, primarily, and other stuff. They were actually kicked out of their stadium for two games. I forgot until I looked it up. They were kicked out of their stadium for two games because California COVID restrictions. Or not California, I'm sorry, Santa Clara County in California because of a stay-at-home order. So they were kicked out of their stadium essentially for two weeks or the last two games. So it was a tough year for them. For sure. So look at this year's Cincinnati team. Look at, I'm sorry, I forgot to mention Philly. Philly. They looked like they were going to be in the NFC Championship this year, but then the wall just came tumbling down for them. So, unfortunate. Philly didn't get back there. Cincy didn't get back there. San Francisco in 2020 they didn't get back there. Arizona, they made the playoffs in 2021. Have sucked the past two years. The point is, there's no guarantees. I can go on this board, and this is the reason for the board, and name one thing positive about every team going into 2024. Buffalo. OC Joe Brady. And you still have Joss out. Miami. McDaniel rules. He still has the Santa Ana offense design, and he runs it good, so... And it looks like Frank Smith's coming back, so McDaniel rules. New England, new QB. Something promising. Jets, 7-10 and 10 with QB controversy. And now Rodgers is back. So he makes them so much better. Baltimore. Dominant defense returns, most likely. They're going to have a dominant defense still. And they just made the MC Championship, but that's no guarantee of success the next year, as I just said. So why am I contradicting myself? I don't know. And still have Lamar, if he's healthy. Cincinnati, kings of the division. They've been the kings the past two years before this year. Something just happened this year, but they'll be back next year. That is certain. As this pen, it looks like, has run out of ink. Not good. Therefore, we are going to transition into this pad. Cleveland Browns. Watson returns. You expect him to be better, and he probably won't be, though, but you expect him to be better. And Pittsburgh. Mod potential modern offense to go along with that good defense, so... Yeah, new offensive coordinator, and it's going to be a better one. Exciting. Houston, promising year this year. You got C.J. Stroud, who's on the rise. They won the division. Everything's clicking in Houston. Indianapolis, they are also up and coming. Whether we like it or not, they're very much an up and coming team. That's a reason for optimism in 2024. Jacksonville, Trevor Lawrence, and you should have made the playoffs this year. But you stomped on the terrible towel and that curse backfired. You're lucky you don't play the Steelers. So, this coming year. So, that's what I say. And Tennessee, 
new head coach who can get the best possible out of Will Levis, just like Zach Taylor has with Joe Burrow. Denver, year two under Sean Payton. You were 8-9 and nine last year, and that was the first year of him. So he'll, he's only going to make this team better, so year two. Kansas City, Mahomes. That's all I have to say about them. Las Vegas, Antonio Pierce. He's brought so much energy to the team, and he's made them better. He's going to make them better, Antonio Pierce. If Tom Telesco does good, which I like him, so I hope he does good. Los Angeles Chargers, Harbaugh and Herbert. Dallas, top offense and top defense. There's potential you'll still have at the end of the day, Dan Quinn is your DC. That makes you guys competitive. New York Giants, Danny Dimes. Daniel Jones comes back, and you're likely going to get some receiver help. Philly, new coordinators, and Vic Fangio is really going to improve that defense. Washington, Adam Peters. He's going to assemble a roster that's going to be ready to compete on day one, I believe. Chicago. Sorry, my hand's just getting sore with all this writing in these word places. Number one pick. Detroit. Rookie contracts. And the all-grit mentality instilled by Cam will make them competitive. Green Bay. Explosive offense. Minnesota, maybe Kirk. Maybe Kirk Cousins will be back and make this, take this team to the next level. Atlanta, Zach Robinson. Having him as your new offensive coordinator will be big. That will be helpful for sure. Carolina, Dave Canales. Bryce Young's going to be pretty good next year, I believe. I'm riding the Bryce Young hype train early and often. He, This guy turned around Gina. This guy turned around Baker. He's going to turn around Bryce. Mark my words. New Orleans. New offensive coordinator. That's all I have to say about them. Tampa Bay. Still got Baker Mayfield. Arizona. Up and coming. This team overperformed year one and they are truly up and coming i believe los angeles rams puka and the other young talent i mean this was supposed to be a bad year for you guys and you were good so that's good san francisco cal sanahan and seattle talent So, every team has a reason to be optimistic and excited going into 2024. And that's what this exercise just did. One for everybody. And I tried to explain the best of my ability. Why every team has a reason to be optimistic about next year. So, my point is, Dan Campbell was right when he said it's going to be twice as hard next year. That was the point of the exercise. To prove that what he said was correct. And I feel like I just did a good job of that with, as I try to set this door, with that. So let's talk about that. Let's talk about why yesterday's outcomes happened. And let's talk about why they happened. And what could happen to get these teams back to where they belong in Baltimore and Detroit. But first, we're going to focus on the Super Bowl. Kansas City and San Francisco. These are two very good teams. It's going to be a great game. That I almost can guarantee you. Who do I think will win the Super Bowl? I know who I think is going to win the Super Bowl. You guys will find out Friday, February 9th in my finale. We'll break down the matchup and go for the Super Bowl. And I can't wait for that. So, yeah. Next, we're going to now, the moment you've all been waiting for, we'll talk about the games. Now it's the NFC Championship Recap. Or Championship Recap. Kansas City and Baltimore. My, here are my thoughts. Kansas City didn't look like 
they did last week. I think they played better against Buffalo, to be honest. Baltimore was the team that shot themselves in the foot. With the touchdown pass, to, with the near touchdown pass to Flowers, the taunting call, they push them back 15 yards, then Flowers fumbles at the goal line, and then a couple minutes later, Jackson throws that pick. That's why I think it happened. The Ravens, you can't blame that on coaching. It comes down to the players. Zay Flowers made rookie mistakes, and you got to get over that, and he'll be better because of it. Lamar did not do his job. Steve Spagnuolo has an amazing defense. We all know that. He had its defense locked down in the playoffs. So, that's my take on that. Spagnuolo did good. But Lamar needs to be a billion, billion times better. That's what I think. He needs to be a better quarterback. All around. That's my belief. Will he? Time will tell. He needs to learn how to throw better. Or else Baltimore needs to find a new quarterback. I know you're probably thinking I'm crazy right now by saying that. This was probably your best shot to get to the Super Bowl with Lamar. And you failed to do that this year. Why? Nobody knows. That's a talk for another day. But in the end, Patrick Mahomes... Could probably pass Tom Brady as the greatest of all time. And he can. There's no doubt in my mind he could do that. The question now becomes, can he win this? Because if he wins this, he already has Kansas City up to four rigs. And he has three rings himself. Three of those would belong to him. If he wins one this year, even if he doesn't win one for another two or three years, he will be in position to either tie or pass Brady to have the most ever rings, which is insane. So that's that's my theory. Looking at Baltimore, though, now it's on to the losing side. Looking at Baltimore. They're, uh, this team's going to be in the playoffs next year, I feel. However, this was their best shot at the Super Bowl, and they wasted it. They choke in the playoffs, and they need to be better. So, yeah. On to the NFC Championship now. This one, truly hard, because you guys all know I'm a Lions fan, so... <sighs> this one hurt. Lions lost... To the 49ers, 34-31 at Levi Stadium in San Francisco last night. I knew the Lions would lose this game. I predicted that. However, the score I predicted was not the best. I picked 30-10, to 10, San Francisco. I thought they'd get steamrolled. However, they did not. Detroit was doing the steamrolling. Hmm, <sighs> Tired, I had an appointment this morning at the dermatologist. So that's why I'm so tired. But, yeah, it's crazy. I can't believe they blew that. I really can't. I don't even want to talk about that game, to be honest with you. I mean, I, I just, I don't feel like in the mood to talk about what happened or what went down. San Francisco was the better team. We all knew that. But this was truly awful. It's truly an awful way for your season to end. You're 24 to 7. You're most likely on your way to the Super Bowl. And you get beat. Because you failed to execute the second half. I think it was a lot. I, I mean, San Francisco is the better roster. We all know this. But they got lucky on that series. When uh, the bobble off the helmet that landed in Ayuk's hands, 
the balls dropped by the Lions. And on top of that, the fumble by Gibbs. That sequence sifted the game. If that sequence never happens, Detroit wins that game probably by 7 to 10 points. Which is a save. You can't blame coaching for that. Dan Campbell and the staff had a plan. They just failed to, the players failed to execute. Because San Francisco is that good of a team. No matter how, how hard you can play. That's just a very good team. And we all know that. We all accept it at this point. That's all for this video. We got a Super Bowl matchup in two weeks. Kansas City and San Francisco. I think the Super Bowl recap, my Super Bowl recap video, is going to be that week's Mondays with Mason episode. We might have something go. If there's another topic, it will be separate, its own special video. But most likely it'll be a Mondays with Mason one because we'll recap everything. The halftime show, the commercials, the game itself, and everything else so it'll be a big video and that's how we'll conclude our nfl season however we will talk about offseason planning and stuff like that that video will probably be out either the week of the 18th sometime mid to late that week or early the week of the 25th i'm gonna try to have it out by the 27th or the 28th that's when the combine in indianapolis starts so i'll try to have that one out by then that's for sure. It's not going to be the best because I'm going to try to make it the best, but I don't think it will be just because it's too early to know all the needs and all that. I'd have to look at the free agents. So we'll talk about a lot on there, and I'm looking forward to that one. That's for sure. Then after the Super Bowl, you got the Combine, late February, early March. March 14th, you open up your free agency for the year. Then after that, there's nothing till the draft. So it'll be a lot of draft coverage. Like, really close to the draft. As I had mentioned, um, we're going to primarily, most likely, take a little pause. Where we just do the Boys of Winter series and pit basketball. And Mondays with Mason, obviously. That's all we're going to do here for a couple weeks until the Pirates start back up. So, yeah, this channel is going to be very, like, rather slow until August or September, which is nice. I need it, so focus on some other stuff in my life. Got a life to live, and yeah, I mean, seasons change. I mean, wouldn't it be interesting if we're always living in the heat of summer or the cold of winter or the leaves falling of the fall or the flowers rising, flowers blossoming in the spring, so seasons change. Actually, that's one of my favorite parts about living here in Western PA. You don't have, like, you have seasons, you don't have, like, there's a lack of seasons in, like, places like Arizona and even Florida. It's all sunshine and all that, but I do love the sun. Don't get me wrong, I love the sun. Summer is my, fall is actually my favorite, but summer is my second favorite just because of the sun. I love warm temperatures. I hate cold temperatures, so, yeah, I do love the sun and all that, but Florida in the summer, Arizona in the summer. I was in Arizona this past summer. You guys should go check out that video. It's the Arizona trip one. I was sweating. Half the restaurants my dad and I wanted to go to were closed because it was so hot outside and places shut down early. So you wouldn't want to deal with that. I'm sorry for all the all of you guys out there in Arizona that have to live through hot summers. But the positive is you don't have to live through cold winters. Same thing here in Pennsylvania. You don't have to, we don't have to live through like dangerously hot summers. So yeah, that's definitely interesting. That's all I got for this video. Have a good one. Take care. Stay safe. Pray for Israel. And as always, peace. See you guys around.